So we're just going to make it informational. Half a day, Dan Mananasi Zuz. Thank you for being here today. The Guam Trademark Commission will now be called to order. What we're going to do, um, we haven't been able to make quorum, although we do have six people here. Um, we need six members for it to be quorum, so we're going to hold this as an informational briefing, and we very much appreciate the presentation that we're going to be able to have. It's going to be very valuable to our community, and we're very excited to be able to learn from it and, and have it shared with the community. For the record, in accordance with the open government law, meeting notices were given to all commission uh, senatorial members, stakeholders, and all main media broadcasting outlets. The first notice was sent on uh, Friday, excuse me, January 31st, 2020. And the second notice went out on Wednesday, February 5th, 2020. Today is Friday, February 7th, 2020 and the time is 9.02. We have uh, five members present, and uh, as I mentioned, it doesn't quite uh, make a quorum, but uh, we're gonna go ahead and have it as an informational briefing. We just won't be making any decisions unless somebody comes in partway through the presentation and we have our, our quorum ready to go. So again, thank you all for attending this morning's meeting. I think with it, being at the beginning of the year and after the holidays, uh, we have all kinds of seasons, tax seasons coming up and so forth, um, that we just weren't able to, to get everybody to attend. But we've been so, so fortunate all last year. We've had really good attendance, and I appreciate that. Uh, I know everybody's schedule is really, really busy. So this is our eighth meeting. The commission last met on Monday, December 16th, 2019. And if we could go around the table, um, perhaps I'll start on my right, and then if people could uh, turn on their mics and introduce themselves and go around the table, and then that way we'll know everybody who's present for today's meeting. Sidious Maasi. Hafadeh, my name is Pilar Laguanya, President and CEO of the Guam Visitors Bureau. I would like to thank Honorable Kelly Marsh Titano for the opportunity to be a part of your Trade Commission today. Thank you. Half a day, my name is Chris Lizama. I'm with the Guam Visitors Bureau. Half a day, I'm James Turbio, representing the office of Senator Luis Munoz. Good morning, Matthew Baza, the Guam Economic Development Authority. Manana Sizuus, see Laura Sauderzu, and I'm representing the speaker. Maulik. So we have a very good group that are here today and um, we may have uh, end up having a, a lively discussion for a bit after the presentation as often happens. So recapping December's meeting, uh, we had Mr. Albert Perez provide a brief closing presentation where Mr. Mike Unisog provided the Department of Revenue and Taxation's overview on the trademark and intellectual property rights filings. Uh, we learned a lot from both of their presentations and the information that they shared about reviews and processes administered by the Department of Revenue and Taxation. So as I mentioned today, we welcome the presence of Pilar Laguanya. She is the President and Chief Executive Officer for the Guam's Visitors Bureau, as she mentioned. She will be giving a presentation on the Visitor Bureau's role that will allow the Commission to become more informed toward creating the framework and scope that is necessary for drafting the Guam Cultural Trademark Act and the Guam Trademark and Intellectual Property Rights Act. So if we're looking at item 2A on the agenda, this is the new business and we'll get right into the presentation. It's going to be an overview articulating the Guam Visitors Bureau developing the Guam brand and its role serving as a critical bridge linking government, the tourism industry, visitors, and the local community. Copies of uh, the, the uh, President Pilar Luguatnia's PowerPoint presentation are provided for your reference. So everybody has been given those and we can write notes in our questions as we move along. So 
Again, I, I thank the Guam Visitors Bureau for taking the time to provide this presentation and for all the work that has led up to the development of the Guam brand. I'm wearing a pin right here, and, and we've had some discussion of it uh, b before. It's a, a very nice way of taking cultural elements um, and making them available and accessible to everybody, where I believe we have the Sackman or Galaidi, uh, we have the Sinahi, and then if somebody can help me remember this, what the third symbol is, or are we gonna get the, into that in the We're presentation? Get into that, yes. Okay, so we'll, we'll save that for the presentation, but I think it's so clever, and it, it creates uh, something sort of new and I dynamic, but based in those cultural roots, which is so important, um, and, and we'll have some discussion about elements like that. So I'll go ahead and give uh, just a few minutes for them to set up the presentation, and then um, the president, uh, Pilar Laguatnia, will take it from there. So just Masi. Hafade and Toto Hamzu, Guausi Pilar Laguanya. I am the president and CEO of the Guam Visitors Bureau, and I'm so delighted today to talk about the Guam brand. Today, I'm very pleased to share with you the development of how we came about the Guam brand. How did we get to where we are today with the Guam brand, you might ask? It took a lot of planning and developing to determine who we are as a people, who we are as an island, and who we are as a commodity. And setting a milestone to achieve our goals was a big undertaking for the Guam Visitors Bureau. It took a tremendous amount of time, and it took a tremendous amount of people in our community and our friends abroad to help us with this. Next slide. So, there are three important questions we felt we needed to answer first in order to determine our destination brand. First question is, what is it? It is the instant recognition of a place in a geographic location. It is simple, it is relevant, and it must be emotionally connected. Then we asked ourselves, why is it important? It is important because we need to separate ourselves from other destinations. The unique identity and personality of a place of business, a place of leisure, and a place of travel. This needs to be distinguished separate and apart from anywhere else. And then the third question we asked ourselves, who needs to be involved? Well, everyone, the public, the private sector, our political and business leadership, and of course our grassroots and our entire community needs to be a part of this process in order to determine the destination brand. So after we, next slide, after we answered these three important questions, we asked ourselves again, what is the brand? Well, after we figure out what the brand is and is not, we realized that a brand is not a slogan, it is not a logo, and it is not a signage. It isn't even a trade name or color schemes or particular font scripts, and it is not an icon. So again, we ask, what is a brand? It's an idea. We felt it needed to be something of relevance. It is an emotional experience promised. And that is the key magic word the emotional experience promised. So, a, next slide. A brand can be defined best as a, a promise kept. It's very simple. We say something and we keep it. So the brand is a promise kept. 
When a destination is marketed for business or for leisure travel, we make a promise. When a promise is made, expectations are created. And when the brand delivers on these expectations, there is equality, you build loyalty, and then you build commitment and a desire for that brand. Next slide. So then, after GBB went through this process, we started to work on the branding exercise. We listed all the things we wanted to request in a request for proposal, and we commenced that work in the year 2007. And we secured, through the successful bidding, an award to a company named Burson Marsteller a PR company who helped us through this process. They were the experts of knowing the scientific way to really define a brand without telling us what our brand is. And through them, we had a company named Landor, who is extremely famous for building huge international brands. And we knew Guam needed to become a global brand. So they designed our Guam signature as we know it today. We realized that we had to reach out to many stakeholders and to see how the island viewed outsiders to Guam and how outsiders viewed Guam. And we had to all come to a mutual agreement as Guamanians, as Chamorros, and as an industry. So the brand must resonate. Next slide. The role of the brand for Guam Visitors Bureau, we felt had to be simple, and it had to portray instant communication of the expected experience. The link was important. We needed to distinguish to the guests the experience of welcoming the nature of the Chamorro culture, our people, and everything that we are so proud of here in Guam. We needed to come up with a brand that was going to celebrate our diversity of Guam at all levels and to make it a real benefit. We needed to demonstrate the depth of our activities and the experiences that make it worth for a visitor to stay longer and come more frequent. After all, tourism is an economic engine for our economy. Next slide. So we need to also understand our competitive landscape in order to find your uniqueness, in order to find your brand, you must know your competitors as well. So we studied our competitors, all of us competing for the same target market, all of us trying to find the true essence of who we are and what we want so we can entice them to our island as a vacation destination and one that would be uniquely experienced. Next slide. So. There were certain phrase, uh, phases that we needed to accomplish, and we recognized that. There was a lot of work ahead of us, but we needed to leverage the expertise and decide what we needed to do to get there. So phase one was research and insight development. We started this work in 2017. We went out for excuse me, 2007, and we issued out a request for proposal to obtain the professional services of a brand development com company. From that, we moved on to phase two, brand building. We needed to identify the content and the meaning. Burst and Marsteller helped us guide us through this process. Then we moved on to phase three, the messaging. 
It took us about four to six weeks to put everything into what we called a brand book. And that was the reference guide for all of us that were involved defining the brand. We worked with many stakeholders in the brand sessions. I think I can recall being locked in our conference room for two days and we had cross-section community representatives from everywhere. No one was left out of the process. And we brought all of our thoughts, all of our, idea, our ideas into one clear message. Phase four required us to come up with our brand identity. That is the graphic development and that is where Landor the world famous brand developing icon. They've taken companies, corporations, and have made them famous throughout the world. And we were so privileged that Burstyn Merstella had them at their disposal to help Guam Visitors Bureau. So they helped us turn all this information that we gathered and had one concise message from our stakeholders and turned it into our Guam brand signature you see today. Phase five was the most difficult, in my opinion, in my experience in all of this. And the work has not stopped. But I have seen personally through my years at Guam Visitors Bureau, the tremendous success of using our Guam brand signature. So that phase five required embracing the brand, working with our community, with all of our stakeholders, we officially launched our Guam brand on January 28, 2009. And we continue to ensure that the Guam brand was always in the forefront of all of the work we do here and abroad as we promote it, Destination Guam. Next slide. We then moved on to the development, the brand ident identity development, the true essence of Guam. And this, I think, was the most exciting part of the Guam brand creation. Our stakeholders developed six simple descriptions to define the essence of Guam. There's no right or wrong answer on what the Guam brand means to us. It is very personal, it is very touching, it comes from your heart, from your corazón. But in essence, there were six simple descriptions. The first was bright and sunny that represented our clean ocean environment. The smiles of our Chamorro and Guamanian people and the hospitality one can experience when they come here the deep ties to our cultural heritage and the festive extended family values that we all love and are fond of. The aspirations that we have for future promise for our generations to come. The uplifting of the old image into a bold and refreshing new look. A clean and simple icon separating ourselves and bringing forth the essence of Guam from other tourism destinations. Next slide. So here in this visual that I have on this screen, we start to put this all together. And now we are very proud to present our Guam brand signature. Next slide, please. Next slide. We are Guam, but what does it mean? Yellow, our sun, the warmth of our people. Blue, the ocean that gives us life. Green, our trees. Brown, our land in which our roots are embedded. Guam is paradise. Millions of visitors a year think so too. This is the Guam brand. We are Guam. 
Next slide, please. The next few slides will show some of our very first programs that we developed throughout the island community to get the buy-in and to start introducing the Guam brand and to promote it. So these are images that were taken in 2009, soon after we launched our Guam brand. And this is, uh, these are images of our Guam Liberation uh, Parade and how we participated and unveiled it, uh, unveiled the Guam brand and how it was used and messaged to our island community. Next slide, please. This is an image of the first recipient of using the Guam brand and the Guam brand guidelines that we created. I'm very proud of this. GW ProStart team, they were going overseas for a competition and their professors, their, their instructors wanted to make sure that they were well represented in terms of our island of Guam. And so we collaborated with them and they requested to use our Guam brand and you can see the Guam brand affixed to their uh, official uh, attire and this is the George Washington High School Pro Start team. So our first pioneers of taking the Guam brand outside of Guam in a, in a form of our educational uh, young people helping us with the Guam brand promotion. Next slide, please. This goes without saying that our children have also embraced our cultural identity to great extent and the Guam brand lives through the building of our cultural capacity. Next slide. We had also implemented a village ambassador program and used these ambassadors and their messages to resonate the Guam brand all over Guam and also in our promotions. Next slide, please. Some came from different villages who wanted to participate with our Guam brand. So we had a competition here in Guam to incorporate art mural walls. And you can see always the Guam brand affixed to it. Next slide, please. Sharing some of the artistic re renderings in this visual, you can see our barragada and uh, our also um, a mural that was done in, in Arahan. And I'm very proud to say in the front of this Congress building, we have created, it's not done yet, but we have created our very first mural on the ground. And it's dedicated to the marine life here in the Marianas Trench. And it is our way of supporting sustainable marine life and our environment. And you will see once the art piece is done, our Guam brand will be affixed to that. Next slide, please. The Island Fiesta Tour was also a project that was brought uh, about and uh, the concept of this was to bring tourists to the homes of our local people who were hosting fiestas. And it was really a wonderful opportunity to highlight uh, and offer an experience of hospitality and culture by our Chamorro people and our visitors. Next slide, please. The Guam Visitors Bureau also implemented a Chamorro Dance Academy that is amazingly successful today, branching out to many places in Japan and in the US mainland. Next slide, please. With the Guam programs, uh, with the Guam brand programs, the question that we needed to also ask ourselves is what can you do? Not what just GVB does or should be doing, but what can each and every one of us do? While this slide shows that we are determined to foster our tourism industry. The same can be asked of you as you begin in this journey. Six points I would like to share. Ownership 
belongs to everyone. Branding brings identity, uniqueness, and pride. You need to observe the attitude shift of the local residents. We should also take note of outreach programs. We would also want to recommend that we measure the success of the endeavor as well as the deliverables. And we should take note of third party accounts of the experiences. Next slide, please. Building a reputation and linking opportunities will help ensure that the brand message message gets out there, utilizing all tools that are available today. And with social and digital media, this is an added plus and a very powerful tool that you will have if you create a Guam brand of your product or of your service. It requires awareness, frequency, publicity, credibility, experience, and referrals. Next slide. These are examples of how we use the Guam brand today. It works, and it embraces everything that we do to promote Destination Guam. Next slide, please. How we use the Guam brand signature and the application. You must protect your brand. We are very vigilant in protecting the Guam signature brand, and there is a process when one wishes to use it. We are very proud of this brand, and in protecting it, we ensure that there is a review and an approval process for any requests, and we use our Guam brand very diligently, and it is registered. This is a simple process to ask to use the Guam brand, but it is an important one nevertheless. Everything is documented for the record. So, for example, the process works like this. Part one, you submit a letter. You let us know exactly what the specific needs are or how many pieces you're going to use the Guam brand on. And you must identify whether this is for commercial or non-commercial use and the specific time frame. Next slide. Once the GVB is satisfied that we know how the Guam brand will be used and what purpose and for how long, we will confirm the usage by a contract request with the requesting party. And that would also require providing us with samples, following the official guidelines, acknowledging that GVB retains full rights, and the Guam Visitors Bureau will have three pieces or a set of whatever was produced for our records. Next slide, please. We, with everything in place, the sample, the agreement, the record keeping completed, GVB will assure that the Guam brand is used properly and with our permission. Once GVB is satisfied and we know what our Guam brand signature will be used for and what purpose and for how long, we will confirm it with a contract for usage with the requesting party. Next slide, please, which is a video. We are Guam, but what does it mean? The shape, symbolic of the PROA's strength and innovation. It's the foundation of our character, our collective smile and open arms. The layers, representing values of the Chamorro, Respeto Zan in Nefamalik, echoing through generations to come. This is the Guam brand. We are Guam. Next slide, please. Yellow is our sun. Blue is our ocean. Green, our beautiful trees and flowers. Brown is our land and our people. This is our island. Yes, Lato. This is my island. This is my island. This is my island. We are Guam! Next slide, please. 
So it's, uh, these were necessary steps that Guam Visitors Bureau took to create and protect our Guam brand. It took a great deal of time, it took a great deal of effort to create the Guam brand, and it is a community effort. And I think it's one of Guam's greatest assets that belongs to the people. And we are caretakers and custodians to protect that for our island. And this is how we showcase the We Are Guam brand. Sidus Masi. Sidus Masi, that was a, a very important presentation. It really helps us understand the time that's involved in the development of such tools and um, all the processes that are in place um, and, and then all the continuing efforts that it takes. Uh, we were having a discussion a little bit before as well as about with that competitiveness that there always has to be um, perhaps a, a continual revisiting to make sure that we're current, we continue to be competitive uh, and building on those tools that you have developed at GVB. So we're passing around, oh, the brand guidelines. I think this will be very helpful for us to look through. And again, um, we really appreciate access to this because as we're looking through to understand uh, marketing, to understand processes, to understand policies and guidelines for the work that we're doing, the more that we're able to look at what we've already put into place uh, that we can build on rather than starting from scratch each time, um, I think that it will serve a, a, to be a very useful tool. Um, did we have, let's see, did we have any questions or discussion that people had? I know that I, I certainly appreciated so many points and I was busy writing notes as we were going along. Um, some of the parts that was really important and maybe it's one of the exercises that will be part of our subcommittee work is understanding what it is not. Sometimes that helps understand those boundaries of what it is we're working towards by making it clear what it is we are not working towards or what is outside the parameters. So that was very useful to hear as well as uh, some of the other steps about relevance and um, let's see, emotional ties that are there because we're gonna be talking about things that are very, uh, they're economically important to people, but it's gonna be very emotionally and otherwise important to people. It's gonna be something that they create, that they have intellectual property rights to, uh, and certainly I'm sure for a lot of them, very emotional ties to what it is they're creating. So it was good to hear that those can be parts of a process to something that maybe from the outside looks like it, it wouldn't involve those sorts of elements. And I really liked, at least for the Guam brand, but I'm sure it will come in handy for us as well, about creating expectations and then, then figuring out how to make that be a promise that is kept. So when we're looking at the policy that we're going to be developing or at least making recommendations for how it's going to be maintained, how it continues to service, how it continues to be viable, and so that it is policy that keeps on providing and protecting, I know will be very important to us. Um, I, I do have some other notes, but did anybody else have uh, thoughts? I had several uh, thoughts as I looked at it. I really appreciate that you explained it because I've never witnessed an explanation of it before. So I've seen the brand, it's catchy, but I didn't, re I didn't realize the significance that went into, into developing. So I think it's important that we remind ourselves of that and that we see the image for what it, for what it is because it represents who we are, right? So that's, that's significant. So I'd like to suggest that we uh, use it in FESPAC. Uh, as a way of communicating who we are as a community, right? Uh, we might as well be incorporating it. I saw your beautiful shirts. 
I mean, this could this this um, brand could be incorporated into the official dress of Festback goers or Festback delegates. Uh, that's one thing. I also thought that a way of connecting the brand with what uh, visitors experience when they come to Guam and what our own local tourists uh, visiting historic sites, for example, that we could incorporate the brand into signage. And maybe GVB could then, as always, help us with <laughs> creating the interpretive signage that we so uh, longingly uh, you know, hope for. Um, and that's another way of communicating authenticity and, and validating um, culture and tradition and history. So those are two ways I thought we could utilize the brand uh, in ways that will help people to instantly connect with the image. Those are excellent points, Dr. Sada. Thank you. Uh, I agree as well, Magahit. And I, I do think that it's important for us all to understand that when we're developing our own trademark logo, uh, it can have those deep cultural or experiential elements. And we do, it was good to be reminded of all of those that really are part of that Guam brand. Um, with the colors, I'm, I'm not sure I understood all the colors and their significance before, and so it really shows the, the depth of research and uh, intention that are part of this brand. And certainly I think that there is going to be a connection with uh, GVB and FESPAC. They have long historical ties and definitely there, there's going to be communication. In fact, on FESPAC we have, we're, we're very fortunate, so thank you for sharing some of your staff with us, um, but we do have a, a, a permanent member of the committee is somebody from GVB, so there's a very nice synergy there. But uh, I, I, I do like what you're talking about, and we can definitely continue to look at that further. And yeah, there are opportunities here, and so maybe this is some of what we can be thinking about as we're developing policy, is that uh, we're doing certain things, but it may also create opportunities that um, maybe we wouldn't have thought about without a presentation like this. I think that some of what the Guam Product Seal has helped me think about as well is it's very visual and it's done in such a way that it creates that feeling of experience, culture, and so forth, just like the Guam brand does. And I think the Guam Product Seal has done that as well in the thoughtfulness of their logo. So I think those are all important discussions. And thank you for highlighting that for us so that we can be thinking about those elements. The other thing I forgot is the license plates. You know, I mean, if it's going to be our brand, we have to own it in many different ways, right? And people have to see it constantly to associate it with us. License plates are very, very visible. And I know that uh, when you go to Georgia, you don't have to know that you're in Georgia. You see the peach. So, I mean, it's that kind of, of uh, attention grabber that I think is, is healthy to promote the brand here at home. But everybody who comes here sees it, yes. you know? Yes, that is uh, a great example of, the, uh, of more work that has to be done with the Guam brand. It's, it's always a work in progress. Um, at the beginning, it was, uh, we felt was an incredible challenge. Uh, but today, looking back at our journey, we see more and more at, um, uh, embracement of our Guam brand. Uh, we have uh, brought it to, into our schools. We have brought it into our half a day pledge programs. And I think the license plate idea is a great one. Um, we did try to bring it up, but then the license plate issues are all pre-ordered and things like that. But we constantly uh, look for those opportunities and are always welcome to um, other ideas and, and other venues to promote the Guam brand. I'd like to point out that our Guam brand guidelines is very extensive. It outlines how one can use the, um, first of all, the colors all have meaning. 
and uh, our guidelines will express the meaning as it resonates to the essence of Guam. There is a purpose for the color and reasons for the color. There's a purpose for the particular type of font we use. And there is a purpose for how we control the application of the brand, whether it's put on a shirt or on a brochure or in an advertising. There are control mechanisms there. And that's all set because it needs to be protected and controlled for consistency and for effective delivery of the feelings that we are trying to do, and that is making the promise that uh, we want to keep to all those that see the Guam brand. So I'd like to offer our Guam guidebook uh, guideline uh, as a template example of, of what we could do and, and offer as, as an example of how a brand, uh, a brand can be created um, uh, with different products and different entrepreneurs. Um, who could, uh, you know, look at through the process of what we went through and uh, all the learning experiences that we have already adapted. Yeah, you know, I for one, actually one of the first things I like to look at is the brand booklet because a lot of organizations have logos and, and so forth. So when you look at the, the brand booklet, you know, it tells you all these things, right? And I know for one, uh, GVB has been very good you know, we may not see this logo uh, so much locally, although I do see that there is a concerted effort to do so. I know for a fact you'll see this everywhere else, which is, you know, we're trying to, you know, we're trying to attract people and, you know, give people identity to Guam. So I do know that we do see ads and such in other publications outside of Guam. And I, I, I really like the, the, uh, the effort of, of starting to use this, uh, or not starting, but I know you already have, but um, getting this logo more into the local, um, the local market and the local uh, advertising. Yeah. And it's beautiful, the, the videos are beautiful. Uh, you know, very well made. And I think um, great thought in bringing in an outside um, consultant you know, to help with the branding. Um, perfect, I, I, that's how it should always go. And then you know, we, now we have a guideline. And there's a lot of pride that goes in. I think that one of the strongest statements that you have in your presentation is, is that we're all responsible for the brand, everyone. Right? So thank you, very, very, very educational, um, very informative, and actually entertaining presentation, thank you. And, and Senator, if I might add, um, when the Guam Product Sale Task Force met like seven, eight years ago, um, to create the new Guam. One of the things they wanted to do was create a new seal because the old seal, I guess, had, had served its purpose, its time was up. Um, they used the, the Guam colors in the making of the new seal. So what GVB has done with the brand provides a good opportunity for brand cohesiveness. So, I mean, that's something to think of moving forward. Um, the Guam product seal already uses the Guam colors, uses the typeface um, as the Guam brand. So if someone knows the Guam brand and they see the Guam product, so they can say, oh, this is one in the same, a, a similar idea because it's the same colors, the same typeface. So moving forward, when we get to that point where we start coming up with the actual trademark, <clears throat> excuse me, for this endeavor, um, it might be good to consider using the same colors. I mean, the colors are literally cold because we have the same labeling regulation sheet for the GPS. It's called Guam Gold, Guam Blue, Guam Brown. So. Um, and those already have all the meanings attached to it, so we can build upon that when we get to that point with this trademark or seal or whatever we come up with at the end of all things. Uh, excellent points, and it is true as, as we were being walked through some of this, it did come to mind, especially when uh, I was uh, referring to you earlier, that did click in my mind that, wait a minute, I think the Guam product seal and the Guam brand colors are the same. So there is that continuity, there is that building together so that they're not clashing against each other, they're not struggling against each other. And that is something, I think that's a very good point, that's something that we should keep in mind. And we're very fortunate to have somebody from GVB be part of the board so that we can be working together with that sort of thought if we do end up going in that direction. But it makes a lot of sense that they're all working together. 
rather than uh, at least visually looking like they're so independent and kind of almost like they're struggling against each other somehow. So thank you for those points and uh, for creating a brand that we can build on as a, a government in, in various ways and to create that unified uh, sensibility and I, you know, I think there has to be a certain amount of uh, building on each other's success then, right? Senator, I would just like to add that um, although we are as vigilant of, uh, and Chris is a major part of it, I call her my brand police officer because it needs to be protected and not uh, misused in any manner to uh, keep the integrity intact of the Guam brand. But we have also registered this. Um, we started off with a trademark in 2000. Uh, we updated it in 2020 from a trademark to a registered mark. So if you look at the Guam brand, it is registered with the United States. Um, but we started off when we first um, came up with the the Guam brand immediately registered it with the government of Guam while we were seeking U.S. Um, uh, trademark status and then moved on to becoming a registered symbol. So it is a, a very well protected um, uh, asset of the people of Guam through the Guam Visitors Bureau. And again, that's important for us to hear and understand that we can uh, develop things to that sort of level. And it is important to be protective of them. Um, we want them to serve our community best and they will serve our community best if we are protective of the visuals, but also the, the entire process and everything that goes along with it. So, we definitely thank GVB for their vigilance in that and then for working to assure that each part of this is quality that's, that's serving our community well. Did we have any other thoughts uh, about the presentation before we move on? So what we might do at this point, we're just sticking to informational things, is in agenda item three, we had old business. So when we were last together, we were talking about subcommittees. We were talking about the, the one, which one of the two items of policy that we would be working toward. So I think with the holidays, with the beginning of the year being very busy, and the other things that have been going on, this allows us to have time to be continuing to build up our membership. So that was something that we had discussed in December. So uh, I think in having this time before we meet again, we can continue doing that work that we had talked about in December, about looking at our membership. So. There may be some members within our agencies or like agencies that may be part of the membership. I know that for Matt, he has talked about and we appreciate very much that he has had discussions with fellow coworkers at, at GIDA so that we are fortunate we haven't just gotten one person, we've sometimes gotten the thinking power and, and uh, experience from himself and, and maybe a couple of other colleagues as well. So if we can look for potential members uh, for our subcommittees, people who we work with, um, people I know for Dr. Souter, we had some people sign up of interest that wanted to uh, just as members of the community be part of these. So those can happen as well. And with the Yes, from the conference. And then um, maybe you could tell us a little bit about, I think you've had discussions with the Commission Ifino tomorrow and they're willing to be that membership for the one subcommittee. 
we've, we have had, uh, it's been on our agenda and we've had several discussions related to how we should proceed as a group uh, in relation to discussing intangible uh, cultural art forms. And so we're gonna be scheduling a work session. Our work sessions are usually four or five hours in, in duration to begin the process. And we're gonna be scheduling a work session uh, hopefully within the month of February, if not February, then early March to focus specifically on this and uh, begin to begin to really um, try to shape what what we would recommend as a definition for intangible arts, cultural expressions. Uh, we've been talking uh, on the sideline uh, earlier uh, before the meeting started on how that impacts with the listing that um, we need to begin to address. And so I think clearly defining terms is, is a critical first step. And I think the committees can help us to, to at least get, present to this body of, a, you know, some proposed definitions that we could then go forward with. Si we thank the Commission Ifino tomorrow for their dedication. I know that they work on many, many projects uh, and gather regularly uh, to do this kind of, of work. They really roll up their sleeves and put in many, many hours. So we appreciate that. And we know that they will be developing some really fruitful discussion for us to be able to use and help guide us in our work. So if we can just uh, have that in our minds that we're gonna be continuing that work that we set for ourselves in December of just identifying that membership of who our subcommittees are gonna be and then thinking about the work of that committee and, and how they will proceed. So I, I think that's good work to continue to be doing. And uh, let me look at the last part. And then perhaps in uh, March, we can start reporting on that. We can be reporting, as we had talked about in December, on uh, who our members are and how, what, what some of the thinking is about how they're going to be carrying out their work, just as you were describing. And then we had talked in December about a timeline, so I, I think I mean, we'll continue to discuss this, but I think we're aiming for something uh, to, to make some real progress in recommendations for policy, perhaps by July, so that we can get something done before the end of the summer and, and before the fall season and, and all the things that come with it start getting into place. So if we can keep that as a, a, possi as a possible timeline as we discussed in December, are there any other thoughts uh, or anything else that someone wants to discuss before we go ahead and, and adjourn our informational briefing? Okay, it looks like we're good. And again, we thank the president and CEO of the Guam Visitors Bureau, uh, excuse me, Ms. Pilar Laguanya, so very much. Um, it was very informative, well thought out presentation. It provided us uh, a lot of food for thought and a lot of detail that's gonna end up being very valuable to the work that we're doing. So now that we have no further items for discussion, can I hear a motion to adjourn? I'll move to adjourn. Maulik. So all those in favor? Aye. Aye. The motion carries to adjourn this Guam Trademark Commission meeting. Thank you all for your time. I know we all have busy schedules, but your commitment to the work that we're doing is very commendable. And on behalf of the community, I'm, I'm really appreciative. So the time is now uh, 9.55. Again, Sujus Masi for your attendance and participation in today's Guam Trademark Commission informational briefing. Have a good rest of your day.